What's going on, people? Welcome to United View. Welcome to your daily dose of Manchester United news. What's going on? How are you guys doing? Make sure you guys smash a like on the way into the video and subscribe in the bottom right hand corner. Tap the bell notification as well in the bottom right hand corner on that road to 100k. Let me know where you guys are watching from in the comments and how you're feeling in the international break. I don't like doing videos like this because I'd much rather be talking about the team. I'd much rather be talking about things that we need. I'd much rather be talking about facts. I'd much rather be talking about things that are concrete. But again, the media target Paul Pogba, Pogba with more lies. And I think it's absolutely shocking that we're not seeing more being made of this. And this isn't just in defense to Paul Pogba. This is to a lot of players, but this is the latest. This is the latest one. We can talk about Paul Pogba's failings at Manchester United as a player and, and the football side of it, which I'll do towards the end of this video because I want to talk about the most relevant thing, which is the lies. And that and these lies come from the mirror sport, hang your head in shame, um, and star sport, hang your head in shame. They have gone. So Pogba's given an interview to French media, which usually happens every time he's on international duty. And yes, we've had our fair share of controversy and quotes that could have, you know, that he has actually said with Mino Riola and things that maybe shouldn't have been said. We've been there, we've done it. I've come out and said those things aren't great. But this is a witch hunt. This is just straight bias. Let's just call it what it is. The media don't like this guy. In, a, in an article or in an interview where Paul Pogba has actually openly spoke about his mental health and said that he's been suffering with depression at times of his career, why is that not front center headline of the of the tabloids? Why is why is the you know why is the headline not Pogba reveals mental health struggles? Pogba speaks about his mental health. Why is that? Why is that not? If if we're if we're all about mental health, which we seem to be in the media, which is a good thing, by the way. If we're all about player welfare, human welfare, with everything going on in the world and protecting each other and helping each other, and especially I'm going to um, talk about it from a man point of view as well, especially in promoting men talking about their mental health as well. And we talk about footballers in, in particular, either not coming out um, as as gay or or struggling to talk about their mental health in public, things like this. If we're all about this front centre, why on earth is it not on the front of our tabloid saying that actually Paul Pogba is a really high profile player? Let's talk about the fact that he's talking about his mental health. Let's talk about the fact that he's actually opening up about having his house robbed when his two, his two kids or his kids were at home with the nanny while he was uh, away playing at Man United in the Champions League night. Why is that not front centre? Why? Because there's a complete media bias against him. There's racial bias to him. I'll say it as it is. And also away from racial biases, there's also just the the Pogba the Pogba saga, like putting him on the front of the paper and labeling him literally, as the Star Sport has said here, toxic waste. Club is dead to me. So by misquoting him and making up lies, they think they're going to sell more of their papers instead of thinking of the positive of if actually we put on the front of our newspaper or tabloids that actually if we talk about Paul Pogba talking about his mental health, maybe people are going to pick up this this um this paper and read it and men and and aspiring footballers or even anyone men with mental health struggles can see someone as big and as and as popular as Paul Pogba Paul Pogba talking about his struggles openly talking about it and it might help them but no but no if you're if you're the star sport you go with toxic waste and you go with career down the drain at United club is dead to me which he just did not say mirror sport big big writing you know United is dead to me this is what Paul Pogba actually said. This is what he actually said, right? He says, this year, it is dead. We won't win anything. Whether it's with Man United or another club, I want to win trophies. I couldn't win trophies. You have to be honest, that doesn't satisfy me over the last five seasons. Doesn't You don't need to be Inspector Cluso. You don't need to be Inspector Frost. You don't need to be... I don't know any other more famous inspectors. Inspector Gadget. <laughs> you don't need to be um, a, a, a DCI, yeah, in the Met to decipher what Paul Pogba was trying to say. Not even trying to, what he was saying. Basically, that he's been here five years and he sees it as a failure and he hasn't won anything of note. And, and this is another year. This in particular year is a dead year. Yes, it is a dead year. We say that because we're not going to win anything. 
You can't just then flip that and make up lies to say that Manchester United is dead to me. Words just never come out of his mouth, you know? And I think there's this, there's this thing in the media and I, look, maybe this hits a bit different because I've experienced this. I've been through this um, with the Scottish Sun when they came after me and I did that article with Bill Leckie, when that article was written about me by Bill Leckie and I held him accountable. And there's this bias and there's this thing that just exists that like people think it goes away. People think, people think it goes away or people think you're just playing the card or people think, oh, but he has been crap. Uh, oh, but he has been talking to Mina Riolo and all this. And then you forget, you forget the abuse that this guy's been taking and other players as well. So what do you want the guy to do? Think about it from Paul Pogba's perspective, right? As fans sometimes, and I'm not speaking for, if this doesn't apply to you, then it doesn't apply to you. But this is what I see. As fans, sometimes we say, oh, it's all PR. It's all PR that the players... Um, you know, are, are doing an interview and, and say this and say that. Then they get misquoted in the papers and big outlets. And they say, do you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go on my own social media. That's my own account and set the record straight. Then you get comments, like I said, saying, oh, it's PR. You're just defending yourself. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. What do you want these players to do? This ain't just players at Man United. I'm talking about all football. Of course, players need to take criticism of their performances. Of course, we should be allowed to as fans the media should be allowed to, as journalists, the consumer of any product should be allowed to criticise its workings, its findings, its functionality, its success, especially paying customers. If, you, if you're an actor or an actress, you're going to get media critics, film critics who dissect your film, pick it apart. You've worked really hard on trying to make it the best you can make it. But unfortunately, that's the field you're in. No problem with that. But this witch hunt of like, expecting them not to be human and then the players have to come out and like the Marcus Rashford thing and say sorry I've got my emotions get the better of me it's like what more do you want from these players I don't blame Paul Pogba for wanting to leave the football side of it is a whole separate video and I'm not afraid to talk about that I've, I've been saying a lot of times you know there's many reasons why Paul Pogba hasn't made it at Manchester United he has to take responsibility for his for his own uh failings as well and his own level of intensity in some games and understanding what he needs to do he, he'll he be the first to admit that and some of the things that he says um are correct as well in terms of when he says that um uh I, I play a system in France I know my job in France let's go through some of the quotes that he talks about he says um here in Manchester Evening News have got the quotes here um, he says that uh, it's simple with France. I play and I play in my position. I know my role and I feel the confidence of the coach and the players. It's normal to feel a difference in Manchester United because it's hard to be consistent when you often have to change um, to your position or the team's system or midfield partners. I get along with everyone uh, very well. The French manager, Didier Deschamps, he gave me a role that I know, but at Manchester United, do I really have a role? I asked the question, but I don't have an answer. To be honest with you, Forget how Paul Boggs has been playing. He's bloody right. He goes left midfield. He goes into the six. Sometimes he's in the 10. Bloody playing up front against Manchester City with Bruno. Like, you know, and that's not to say the whole reason why Paul Pogba hasn't worked out at Man United is because of that. But that's a large reason. And it's a big reason why he is successful and he is comfortable within the French national team. Not, again, don't need to be a rocket scientist to work that out. But this media witch hunt needs to stop. Like... If I'm Paul Pogba, I'm thinking, listen, my house has just been burgled. I can't get anything out of the media, whether I try to sit down and speak honestly and openly about what I'm going through or what I have gone through, the criticisms of why I haven't won, why I've been good in some games, why I haven't been good in some games. When I come out and speak on a personal level on my own social media, I think under Oli, just before Oli left, Pogba come out with a statement that, you know, we I remember covering it and we were like, there's no way that Man United allowed him to do that. He just went to social media and did it. And then in the following press conference, Oli was like, yeah, Paul came and spoke to me and told me that he addressed certain things. He does that. He gets slated. What more? What more? What more? What more? As look, from the football inside of it, I think it's best he moves on anyway. But again, I don't even want to... This video isn't even really about the football inside of things as much because it's a straight witch hunt. It's a straight witch hunch before our very own eyes in an age where we're asking players to be more open about stuff. Big Paul Pogba, you know, one of the most famous players on the planet, right, is, is openly talking about his mental health. Why are we not diving into that? Why are we not opening up the conversation about that? Why are media outlets not reporting that? Why? Why is it not front, head and centre? Why? Because they don't think it's going to sell their, play, their, their tabloid papers. 
and I'm sick of it. It happens all the time. It happens. It happens to even players that you know have been performing critically. Uh, you know, really, really bad. It happens to a lot of players. This isn't just a Paul Pogba thing. You know, when I when I done that video on Marcus Rashford, a lot of people were saying Flex, you're just defending him and you're defending the English players. Well, Pogba's foreign. Like I would say the same thing about him. If this was Luke Shaw and people were fat shaming him, calling him fat this and fat that, and then someone put it in the tabloid, one of the one of the big papers put you know Luke Shaw this about his weight or whatever it is, I'll call it out. I'll keep the energy consistent. But this Pogba thing really pissed me off this morning um, because I'm just like, what more do you want the guy to do? It, it 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 doesn't it just be it goes beyond belief and how they're allowed to keep getting away with this and writing lies is beyond me you look at i think it was uh rio ferdinand was calling out was it straight news the other day or he had to say where are you getting this from like there's so much lies in the media and this is and this is why anyway i will i will give you guys my word about quality control and the responsibility that I have as a pla as 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 having a big platform with nearly a hundred thousand subscribers that's going to keep growing and stuff like that. I've I've never professed to be the voice of the fans, and I never ever will be. I don't think that's fair. I think you just provide a platform for people to speak, and you have your views, and people have theirs, and you can you can construct a community where people feel safe to express their opinion. But one thing I will give my word in is that this whole social media thing of like as soon as something's written on social media, flock to the internet. To, to to validate it and 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 justify it like and say that yeah this must be true i just don't i just don't like it i think it's bullshit i think it's i think it's an easy way to kind of just to take things and i think if you've got an agenda in your head or you have a certain opinion in your head about a player or a system or any issue at a football club and then something is written that that instantly it's confirmation bias that's what it is something is written that backs up your point because you fought it for a long time I think it's a very dangerous thing when you when you don't do your due diligence and just roll with that because it backs up your point. And I use that with my own with my own things. You know, if I think that Pochettino's a decent manager and then something comes out and it backs up my point, I'm not just going to run to the end and say, look, look, see, look at this. You guys are all wrong. There's just a big conversation point to be having. Now, I know that's a little bit off topic, but the principle remains the same. I think anybody doing this type of thing, we all got responsibilities and we have responsibility to ourselves to not contribute to that because if you think about twitter social media instagram tiktok whatever facebook whatever youtube whatever it is but especially football twitter where news can travel fast it's like you could believe anything daily daily things are happening and don't get me wrong i think some of them and a lot of the the, the things that are discussed within a community on football twitter should be discussed but they should be discussed as well what about this and why might this might not be true why might this could be true what would this look like if it did happen mm, don't really think that's true but 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 imagine if it was those are those are discussion that's that's what a community is about hypotheticals and and then you get some facts in with that um but i just i just feel really uncomfortable with this whole social media thing and look i know that i i'm in the social media space a lot but I, that's just how why I operate the way the way that I do. That's why I see things the way that I do because I just think it's it's so dangerous. And that's not even really about this. This is a, this isn't this isn't a transfer story. This isn't oh Man United linked with this player. We might get him and uh, you know we're talking. This is different. This is actual a witch hunt to a guy who is openly talking about his mental health struggles, his struggles that his his family's home has been invaded that he doesn't feel safe anymore. Um. And also talking about his 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 time at Manchester United, which looks like it's coming to an end. You know, now I've now I've covered that bit about why I think it's disgusting how they've treated him. I will talk about the football side of it. Is it best for Paul Pogba to leave Man United? I'd probably say yes, partly because of all the things I just mentioned in the beginning of this video for the for the rest of the for the for this video. Partly because of that, but partly because also it hasn't worked out. We haven't found his best position. You know, we're playing arguably our biggest game, not arguably, we're playing our biggest games of the season. And sometimes there's not even a space for Paul Pogba in it. You know, how could he be here, be here for five years? We still don't know his best position or we as fans have an idea of what it is. But depending on what manager it is, he gets played all over the place. Um, in midfield as a, as a two, he's talking about it, keeps changing partners, not really much stability. But even him as himself, has he had the, the highest level of performance that he could possibly have in that area. No. Does he need more around him to thrive? Yes. Hence why he was certified baller at Juventus. 
Hence why he's a certified baller in the French team with an array of talent, with a proper system where he knows he plays the same position every game, no matter who they're playing against. All these things help. And also, Man United need a rebuild. And part of that rebuild is going to be getting rid of players who have had a lot of chance to prove themselves. Now, look, if football football changes, football changes very, very quickly. If Eric Ten Hag arrives and can convince Paul Pogba that, you know, there's a new system, there's a new style and give him the assurances that he wants to work with him and really, really achieve something. Great. But think about it from Paul Pogba's situation. He's been at Man United five years now, I think. Hasn't won what he wants to win. He's what, 29 going on 30, I believe. Last big contract, massive contract. Are you going to sign a four or five year extension at Man United? Knowing that, let's be honest, even at best, say say we do a point ten Hag and he makes a really good go of it and things start picking up in the right direction. We're still, at best case scenario, a couple of years off winning something major, in my opinion. It'll be a super turnaround if we could be considered for big t- trophies next year. It's not going to happen, is it, with with the rebuild? And we, we know that as fans. We have to be patient. We want to be patient. Two to three years, let Ten Hag build, let Pochettino build, let Enrique build. Whoever it's going to be, let them build. Paul Pogba can't afford to just throw away another two years of his contract of his of his career and i get that i get that um whether we think it's right or not whether we think he's you know covered himself in glory with his performances or not the fact is is that it's his career football's a short career for the shit that he's taken off half the fans who don't even appreciate what a good player he can be on his day and what he can add to us um if you're him why why would you want to stay why would you want to stay i wouldn't i wouldn't want to stay if i was him i wouldn't what stay for another rebuild Ah, sod that, I'm off. If I can go to PSG um, and, and challenge for the Champions League, even though they never win it, um, win Liga, be in my homeland, play again with the French team, World Cup coming up, go home, I'd probably take that option. If I could go to Real Madrid, who, you know, they've got a chase in Barcelona that are restructuring. Real Madrid going to be getting Mbappe, probably, maybe Haaland, I don't know. But a big, big project, always wanted to go there. I'm going to go Real Madrid gonna go there do you know what I mean why are you gonna stay here probably be in Europa League next season never know we might get Champions League but even if we do what are we gonna do in it um I just I just see the complete reasons why Paul Pogba is gonna leave and I think he probably should and I think he will I think he will so that for me was 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 where I'm at with it let me know what you guys think um do you agree with me um how do you feel about the Pogba situation and and please, guys, get involved in the comments about the media situation. I want as many of you guys to talk about this as possible because I know there's some people that can say flex, this is nothing new. They always come for Pogba. I get it. But there comes a point where we do have to kind of be quite vocal and really discuss the witch hunt. And it will be the same for another player in a few weeks' time at another club. Um, it just happens a lot. And I'm sick and tired of it. This bias that just always happens for certain players. They just they get it. Do you know what I mean? And I've had it personally from tabloids before. Um, so maybe that's why it hits a bit deeper. So I'm not afraid to express how I feel about it and what it means to me. But I want to know what it means to you guys as well. Smash the like on the video and subscribe if you guys are new. I will speak to you all again very, very soon. Peace.